So today, let me take you on a journey from point A to point B. Well, every journey is from point A to point B, isn't it? But mind you, this is no ordinary journey. Because this is journey from the nightmares to the dreams. Yeah, you heard it right. From nightmares to the dreams. Well, nightmares and dreams, aren't they worlds apart? Aren't they so different? How can you make a trip from the nightmares to the dreams? Well, actually, today, I'm arguing that nightmares are actually mothers of dreams. Nightmares are the stuff that dreams are made of. And I'm going to argue that every nightmare has a silver lining of dreams. How is it possible? Well, let me take a very specific example. Now, surveys show that for many people, speaking in public is one of their worst nightmares. <laughs> Giving a speech in front of an audience, especially when you are doing it in English. <laughs> this is a nightmare. <laughs> However, if you think about it, for some people, this is an essential element of their dreams. Because, for example, if you are running for a public office, if you are running for the President of the United States, you've got to make a public speech. It is the only way to let the world know about you, about your unique potentialities, about your ideas worth spreading. If you do not make a public speech, how can they make judgments about you, right? So you've got to make public speech. So for these people, actually making a public speech is not a nightmare. It is exactly what dreams are made of. Now, if you take the human species as a whole, possibly one of the worst nightmares that we have today is the possibility of total nuclear warfare. Even after the visit of President Obama to Hiroshima, there's still a chance that one of these days some leaders of some mighty nations might just initiate the whole human being by literally pushing a button. It is quite possible. Isn't it the worst nightmare that we have today? However, if you think about it, the very fact that we can research and develop and then deploy and hopefully control all these nuclear arsenals is the very testimony of the great capabilities that we have to understand good science, develop sophisticated technologies, and collaborate to make big projects happen. So if you think about it, actually, the very fact that we can bring about the nightmare of a possible nuclear warfare is the source of our greatest hope, our greatest dream that we can maybe, as a whole, overcome all these difficult problems that we face as a human being. For example, global warming, the shortage of natural resources, the great asymmetry between peoples in terms of economic situations, education, and possibilities. Maybe if we devote all our resources available to these different problems, Maybe we can overcome them. And therein lies our greatest dream. So you see, you're beginning to see a pattern here, right? When we are afraid of something, the possibilities of a nightmare, therein actually lies the glimmer of hope, the possibility for our wildest dreams. Actually, people in the field of positive psychology have studied positive human emotions, right? Like hopes wishes, goodwills, altruism. And they have found that these positive emotions are not unrelated to the negative emotions, like fear, anxiety, envy, all these negative emotions. So that, actually, positive emotions and negative emotions are just two signs of the same coin, the same coin that we are. We are only human. We are sometimes read down. We are sometimes 
fear of our own potentialities and are only human. So positive emotions and negative emotions are not worlds apart after all. They reflect the same existence of us. Something deep down us is reflected in the positive emotions as well as the negative emotions. So that, you know, when you really want to understand your dreams, you actually have to come to face to face with your worst nightmares. I'm sure many students in this university, when you are a senior high school student, right? One of the nice, worst nightmares was failing the exam, right? <laughs> Wasn't it? But you know, look at you now. You made it here. Nightmares often come from the fact that there are uncertainties in our lives. But if there were no uncertainties in our life, then there's nothing worth trying for. There's a wonderful circuit within the human brain called the dopaminergic systems, and they constitute a very integral part of the reward system. And these reward system, the job description is to handle uncertainties, interesting challenges. So you take risks, and if you achieve something unexpected, even for yourself, then these brain's reward systems are activated. That's when your dreams come true. But unfortunately, unfortunately, when you try something risky, something uncertainty, certain, you also have this nightmare of failure. So you see, as I argued, nightmares and dreams are just two sides of the same coin. Now, why am I speaking about this? The reason why is because it is acutely important in a world where we are facing increasingly difficult uncertainties. Some people are putting forward all these uh, conspiracy theories, nightmare scenarios, the world's coming to an end, how we cannot overcome religious differences, how can we cannot overcome these economic asymmetries, how the world is coming to an end, all this stuff. These are the stuff that nightmares are made of in this world. There's an inflation of nightmares rather than an increasing amount of hope among us, right? In this kind of situation, it is very dangerous to try to exterminate the nightmares because it often means that you try to smash these people with different opinions, different cultural backgrounds, We've got to learn how to coexist with your worst nightmares. Because for some people, some people, it is quite possible that your worst nightmares might be their best dreams. So dream purists have a very dangerous life in today's world. Because you, if you want to purify of all potential nightmares, you are also taking life away from your dreams. When you go back to your home today, I really wish you would ponder about your worst nightmares as well as reflecting on your dreams. Because if you do not take good care of your nightmares, you cannot hope to put life into your dreams. This is a very robust argument coming from cognitive science and brain science. But this is something I suspect that many general public have not realized, especially the popular press. They sound as if that we can exterminate these nightmares and live in a world where only, there's only brightness instead of darkness. That's simply not possible. So please take a good care of your nightmares to put a life into your dreams. That's my talk. Thank you very much.